This video tutorial is intended for informational purposes only. If you attempt to reproduce or perform anything that I have depicted in this video, you are doing so at your own risk. I am not responsible for any damages, either personal or to your property, that may result from performing any of these procedures and modifications. There are already a few hundred other videos circulating on YouTube that show you how to replace the save batteries in Nintendo Game Boy and Game Boy Color game cartridges. I've even seen some videos with tens of thousands of views where people use pocket knives, X-Acto knives, and even screwdrivers as pry bars during the replacement process. These videos kind of bug me because while they do show you how to replace save batteries and cartridges using minimal tools, they don't teach you very good practices for handling electronics, and some of these methods aren't even really that safe to begin with. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Kyle. And I like to do tech tutorials a little bit differently and delve deep into the nuts and bolts of things. So come along with me as I show you everything that you need to know to replace the save batteries in your Game Boy and Game Boy Color game carts. Let's begin by covering the tools you'll need for the replacement process. A basic soldering iron, some 60-40 tin lead rosin core solder, and rosin paste soldering flux if you need, a 3.8mm security bit, also called the game bit, and a socket screwdriver to use it with. The game bit typically comes in a set of two, both of which work with Nintendo's security screws on their games and consoles. The game bit is available for purchase on eBay. Type in Game Boy Game Bit to find what you need, and you should get plenty of choices. Otherwise, if you have an iFixit toolkit like I do, two sizes of game bits are typically included. I also recommend having some ESD-safe electronics tweezers handy for picking up small pieces. And of course, you'll also need some Game Boy or Game Boy Color games that don't hold their saves anymore. Now the most important part, the batteries. Depending on your cart, you'll need either the CR2025 or CR1616 cell. Both of these can also be found on eBay, typically by searching for Game Boy CR1616 or Game Boy CR2025. Make sure you buy the ones that have metal tabs already attached to them. Despite their difference in physical size, both of these cells have the same max output, around 3.3 volts. But the CR2025 cells last a little bit longer than the smaller CR1616 cells. Let's start with our first cartridge, Pokemon Yellow. Use the 3.8mm game bit security socket to remove the screw from your game's shell. Then, slide down the top half of the cart's shell and pull it away. As you can see here on my multimeter, this battery no longer has any charge left in it, which is why the cartridge won't save anymore. So let's get to work removing this dead cell. I begin by adding a little solder to the contacts holding the battery to the board. This allows my soldering iron to better transfer heat to the solder already on the contacts. Then I use my tweezers to pull up on the tab while the solder is melted. After the first tab is up, let's do the same thing to the other tab. Nintendo's solder is unusually resilient, much more so than the solder that you can buy off the shelf at your local hobby shop. As you see here, merely adding solder to the remaining battery contact so heat could transfer better was all that was needed to release the battery. After the battery is unsoldered, clean up and flatten out the contacts on the cart's board with your soldering iron. Prep the new battery by tinning the contacts with solder. This will make your soldering job easier. Once that's done, 
line up your battery over the contacts it will be soldered to. Pay attention to the orientation of the tabs on the battery to the contacts on the board. Here you see the correct orientation, in which I've got the positive side of the battery going to the positive contact on the board. Once they're lined up, melt the solder on both the battery and the board's contact so that it mixes together when the battery's contact becomes fused to the board. After the first side is done, do the same thing to the contact on the other side. Let the solder cool, and then lay the game board in the back half of the cart's shell. It's time to test the game in your Game Boy. Power on the Game Boy and go through the process of creating a new save on your cart. Once your save is created, turn off your Game Boy for a few moments to make sure that there's no residual power going from the console to the cartridge. Turn it back on once more, and then check to make sure that your saved game is still there. As you can see from mine, it works! Once you've successfully tested saving, Turn off your Game Boy and remove your cartridge. Reinstall the front part of the game shell and the security screw. And that's all there is to it. Let's do another one. Here I have Pokemon Silver. Remove the screw in the top half of the cart's shell just like before. Check this out. It looks like someone already replaced the battery in this cartridge before, but they've mangled the top tab and taped it to the battery. This is wrong. So let's fix this and do it right. First, I remove the top tab by melting the solder on the contact. Once melted, the battery easily pulls away. The bottom tab wasn't even connected to the battery. I melt the solder on the bottom tab and remove that too. Pokemon Silver typically has the larger of the two cells in it, the CR2025 cell, so that's what we'll put into it today. Tin the two tabs on the battery with solder. And flatten the solder points on the game board. Position the new battery, and then go to work with soldering it to the board, adding additional solder as needed for transferring heat and adequately melting the solder already on it. After waiting for a few minutes for the new solder to cool, put the game board in the back half of the cart shell, and insert the half cart into your Game Boy to test the save feature with the new game. After you've created a new save, turn off your Game Boy, wait a few moments, and then turn it back on and try to resume your saved game that you just created. If the save file is there, like it is on this cart, you're good to go! Put the shell back together with the top half. 
reinsert the screw. And we've got another one done. Let's do one more. This time we'll be fixing a Zelda Link's Awakening cartridge. Just as we've already been doing, open the cart by unscrewing the security screw in the back, and slide down the front half of the cart shell. It looks like this cart uses the smaller battery, the CR1616 cell. Unsolder the first contact, adding solder as needed, and pull it up with your tweezers while the solder is melted. Do the same thing on the other contact, and then remelt and clean up the solder on the board, smoothing it with your iron. Tin the contacts on a new CR1616 battery. Then position the new cell on your board and melt the solder on the first contact. Do the same on the other contact to effectively fuse the new cell to the board. Here's a close-up of what the solder melting process should look like. After the new battery is installed, put the board on the back half of its shell, and pop the game in your Game Boy. Create a new game. And then save the game. After saving, turn off your Game Boy. Wait a little bit, and then turn it on again. When it comes back up, your saved game should still be there. If it is, you've successfully installed your new battery. Put your cartridge back together. Reinstall the screw in the back. And that's it! As always guys, I hope that this tutorial answered some of your questions and was helpful to you. If you liked this video, please click the like button below. And if you would like to see more tutorials like this one in the future, please consider subscribing to my channel. When you do, hit the bell button so that you get notifications and alerts whenever I upload something new. Thanks again for watching. As always, you all stay awesome, and I'll see you in my next video.